Hello, welcome back. It has been a minute for sure since we've done some new math with each other. Um, so I wanted to dive in with something that was a little bit spooky and maybe a little bit different than we've been thinking up bef about before with our proportional relationships. So we started just with a scenario. Here we've got my new business scheme. I want to set up a creepy haunted trail and we're going to charge in this way for entry. Six dollars per vehicle plus two dollars per person in the vehicle. And that's how we will charge the entry fee. So the question is, if there are two people in the vehicle, how much would we pay total? If there are four people, how much would we pay total? And if there are ten people, how much are we going to pay total? And I really liked something that I heard Sierra say that her group talked about. Um, she said, if there are two people in the vehicle, each person is going to pay two dollars. So that two dollars is two dollars per person. Plus, you have to pay six more because that is the car fee. So if we have the $2 per person times two people, we have $4 plus $6, we're going to need to pay $10 total. So if it's, again, $2 per person, but this time times four, we'll have eight plus $6 for the car. It's going to be $14. And if it's $2 per person and there are 10, we'll have 20 plus six for the car, 26. So the thing to notice is that we are only paying that $6 the one time because there's only one car that everyone's in. So the question, next question is, if we split the cost equally, if it is a fair deal and we say, okay, both of you have to pay the same amount or all four of you or all 10 of you have to pay the same amount, what is going to be the price per person? And a few people said that if you wanted to figure out the cost per person, you could take the total cost of $10 and split it up among the people. So if we have $10 over for two people, that's going to be the same as $5 per one person. If we have $14 split over four people, that would be the same as $3.50 per person. And if we have $26 split among 10 people, then each person is going to have to pay $2.60. <coughs> and the way you can do that is just dividing. 26 by 10 is going to be $2.60 per person. So we have another way of writing these, is these are our unit rates, because it's per one person. We're going to come back to this. So if we wanted to get the cost for 50 people, then we could use this rule that Sierra was telling us. We have 50 people. Each person is going to pay $2. So we can multiply $2 per person. And then it's one bus. So it's $6 for our bus fee, which tells us we'll have 100 plus 6, which is $106. And if we wanted to figure out the unit rate, the price per person here, then we could do 106 divided by 50 people. So now, is this a proportional relationship? There are a few different ways we've been thinking about proportionality. One is, is there a rule that you can use to multiply across? Well, 2 times 5 gets me 10. And that's also my unit rate. 4 times 3.5, or 350, is 14, again, my unit rate, and 10 times $2.60 gives me 26, again, my unit rate. So the three unit rates are different. We do not have one constant. So there is no constant of proportionality. Which would tell us no, this is not a proportional relationship. A different way you could look at it, if we're thinking about a note on proportionality, one way would be saying there was no constant of proportionality. Another way, we can say the unit rates are different. And a third way we could say that is the ratios are not equivalent. And what that would look like again, closely related to 1 and 2. But if we're saying 10 to 2, that would simplify to 5 to 1, where 14 to 4 
would simplify, really, 7 to 2 would be the most it simplifies to if we're looking at, uh, at ratios. And those two things are not the same, not equal. Okay, so you need to have a constant proportionality, which means you have the same unit rate, which means that the ratios are equivalent in order for a relationship to be proportional. So let's look at that down here in our CFU. There are 20 nickels in $1. So I could even just make in $1, there's 20 nickels. In $2, that means there are going to be 40 nickels. If I have, let's see, if I have 80 nickels, well, 20 nickels is one, so 20, 40, 60, 80 would be $4. 30, ooh, well, 20 is going to be $1, so minus 20. That leaves me with 10, which would be half a dollar. So I could say that I have one and a half or $1.50. One and a half dollars. Now looking at this, is there a constant of proportionality? Well, if I do 80 divided by 20, I get 4. 20 divided by 20 would give me 1. 30 divided by 20 is 1.5, 1 and a half. And 40 divided by 20 is 2. So yes, there is. A constant of proportionality could be times 1 over 20, since that's the same as dividing by 20. Or in the other direction, times 20, which would be dollars to nickels. So this is proportional. How about this one? We have a flat rate of $25 for t-shirt setup and then $10 for every shirt that's made. So if I make one shirt, I have to pay $25 for setup plus $10 for one shirt, 35. If I make two shirts, I still pay $25 for setup and 10 and 10. One shirt, another shirt. That's $45. If I make five shirts, I still pay $25 for setup. Now I have five shirts that are each 10, so I could say 10 times five, which is $50 for the shirts, plus that 25 is gonna be $75. Now is this proportional? Let's look at some unit rates here. 35 to one, that's gonna just be $35 per shirt. 45 to 2, well, that's going to be $22.50 per shirt. And if I do 75 to 5, that's going to be $15 per shirt. So we do not have the same unit rates. No, these are not proportional. Now, Ms. Cornwall just came into my room, and I think she needs to talk to me. So that's going to be end, the end of the video for today. You've got three problems. I don't want to talk too much about them. I think that these are going to give you some information, and I don't want to give stuff away.